Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about timestamps and file input output uh, in the C programming language and we're going to be using Raspberry Pi for this. I have a project I'm working on where I'm going to be using Raspberry Pi to do uh, data acquisition and data logging and to do that I need to get timestamps to add to the data log and to actually uh, I need to actually create a file and, and write to a file. So I'm just going to show you a little bit on how to dig into that. It's not going to be an, an all-encompassing video. I'm uh, just going to kind of get your feet wet in those two features, and then you can uh, you could do some more research into the functions we're using to see how to make uh, more complete use of it for your case. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are in Genie on Raspberry Pi. I'm, I'm remoted in over uh, VCN. And uh, so I don't want to give you just an overview of what this file does first uh, and I can demonstrate it and then we'll play with it a little bit and I'll, t I'll talk about some of the details. Uh, so first we're basically we're going to create a timestamp. We're going to be saving that timestamp to a variable and we're going to print it to the screen and then we're going to uh, append to a file or create the file if it doesn't exist. Uh, we're going to write to that file with this string, and then we're going to write the timestamp to that to that file, and then we're going to close and save the file. So let me let me go ahead and just uh, build, compile and build this and run it. And you see that it prints the the timestamp to the screen. It says it it is now Saturday, December third, and then it gives the time. That's UTC time and years 2016. So over here in uh, this is the file that we actually uh, created. You see, I've actually ran this twice. Uh, so it was a little while ago. Uh, looks like a little over, maybe about 40 minutes ago, I ran it, and then I just ran it just now. Um, and it appended to that file. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this right now. Move the trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me let me go down step by step and explain what happened here. So we're going to import a couple libraries, uh, time.h, sddio.h, uh, and then we're going to create a pointer to a file uh, data type, and that's uh, that, that, that's all you really need to know there <clears throat> when you're working with files and you're going to use file and then you create a pointer. And in this case, I'm calling it file pointer. You can call it whatever you like. And then in the main function, we're going to create a data type uh, of a, a, a variable called timestamp. And you can, again, you can create it, uh, you can name this wherever you like, but you have to be consistent throughout your program. Uh, and then we're going to call the time function. And the time function wants a reference to a time, uh, this, this type of variable, okay? And so we're going to pass by reference using the ampersand, uh, and then that's going to uh, basically load into this timestamp uh, variable the the timestamp of the uh, of the the operating system that timestamp it has. So you need to make sure that your system's set up to have the accurate time for this to really work. Otherwise, it's just going to return whatever time your system thinks it's on. Uh, then, uh, this is uh, something we've used before uh, quite a bit in, in the tutorials that I have on here. Uh, we're just going to use the print after print it to the screen. And we're going to append uh, that string, that this, it is now, uh, and it included a string here. And then we're going to use the C time function. And that C time function is going to take that timestamp, and we're going to pass a reference to timestamp to that C time function, it's going to uh, return a string that formats that timestamp into something that we can read. Okay, and you saw that on the screen. Uh, next, we're going to actually uh, create the file. I remember I just deleted the file, so there's, there's, no, there's no file there right now. And uh, we need to give the file a name. So we're going to use fopen. fopen is going to return the, the information for that file that we're creating. Uh, but we need to give the file a name, so we need to have a string here. And we're just going to call it file uh, IO test. Now we could call this and whatever we want here, uh, or you could have a string assigned to a variable, and you could include that variable here. Uh, next, this is this this a means that we're going to append to the file. Since there isn't a file already created, it doesn't make any difference. It'll do the same thing as a write. So let, let's, but but just for hahas, let's let's change this to a w. That means a, it's a we're going to write to a file. 
uh, and I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the difference between a W and an A here. So we're going to put a W there, and then these next two lines are actually writing data to the file. So the file's open; it's stored in memory. Uh, we have to actually uh, put the file, uh, the name of the file pointer here, uh, and then we then it's the information we want to write to the file, and it's all going to be a string format with the F print F function. So F print F works almost exactly the same as print F, uh, except we need to include the file pointer and then with a string that we want to write. So we can actually, we could do something like this too. Uh, like if we want, if we had a, uh, like say a number, let's say, let's say a number, like if we have a variable, we don't have it in this program, but we could do this and then it's going to to take whatever this the, the value is here, insert it here, and else we'll go to the file. But we don't have that in this case. We're going to get rid of that. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay, on the next line here, we're actually going to pull that timestamp again. We're going to convert it to a string, and because this this uh, f printf function wants a string right here, and so it's actually going to re uh, to append this line uh, with the actual timestamp and we'll write it to that file. And then next, this f close function actually closes the file. So it's saved to the, uh, to the, the, the file system. So let's go ahead and compile, uh, build, run. And the same thing happened. It, you know, the, it, the time's different, of course, because it's, it's later. And we can look up here and it created a file. We can open that file. And it has a line there. Okay, so just our haws. We're going to leave that there. Then we're going to run this again. Okay, and we're going to run it again. And now let's go look at our file. Oh, there's only one line there. What the heck? Uh, we ran it three times. Why is it, why aren't there three lines? So it's because we used this W here. Okay, so what this does is this is going to, if you have a file uh, that's already named this in your system and you use a W, it's going to overwrite that file uh, if you use this. If we want to, okay, so let's open this up again for, uh, so, so you can get another look at it. So we have one line in there uh, and uh, we're going to close this now. File's there. Now let's put a, an A there for append. And I'll show you how this works. We need to compile and build again. And then let's, let's run it again a, a few times. Of course, you could, you know, in your program, you could create a loop to do this you know, how, however you need to do it. But now let's go. Uh, and we still have that file there, just one. And now if we open it, now you see it appended to the file. So that's the difference between write and append. And if you go look up information on the... Uh, F open function, uh, you can uh, get a full listing of, of your different options there. Now, another thing that you could do, um, and actually I'm going to do this now, um, is you can uh, have a, you can increment uh, some kind of value so that you can keep a W here. Let's say we want to create a new file each time we run this. So let's put a W there. So we're and uh, and instead of just giving it a static name, let's do this. Let's take our our timestamp. I'm gonna copy there and then just put it right there. Remember, I said that that function returns a string. So what this is going to do is that every time we run this, it's going to create a new file because uh, it this timestamp won't be the same. Um, and, and and so uh, I suppose if you ran it fast enough, if it was within one second, you might get the same timestamp and therefore you would overwrite the file. Uh, but the point is, is if the name is different, it'll create a new file. So let's go ahead and do that. And I suppose you could also have the append uh, there and it would work the same. Now let's run this and run it again. And run it again. Now let's look. Oh, look, we have all these files, and and look, they are named with the timestamp. And if I open this up, it 
it's not really this exactly the same. Oh, well, it's pretty close. Yeah, it is the same. But it's not really the same timestamp. Yes, it is. Sorry. <laughs> I confused myself there. Uh, so yeah, so we, we actually, uh, uh, this is this is the line where we actually got the time. So uh, from from this line forward, the value of timestamp doesn't change. And so that the, the, uh, the string that's returned here is the same string that's returned here. There you go. Uh, and so that's really about it for this video. Like I said, it's not comprehensive of these two things. Uh, but it, it's just enough to kind of get your feet wet, get you pointed in the right direction. And uh, I'm going to be using that in some future videos. Uh, we're actually going to create a data logger on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and uh, so I hope you like this video. Uh, please subscribe, like it if you like it. Uh, send me comments and uh, we'll talk again real soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.